Hi everyone, this is Mr. Dunnan, and today we're looking at part two of protein synthesis. Now, you remember in the last lesson we looked at, we had some genes, and if we transcribed them, you know, we ultimately ended up making some proteins, and those proteins were used for things inside the body. Those things could actually form Donald Trump. Now in this one, we remember that proteins can ultimately form enzymes, they can form protein hormones like insulin, they can form antibodies, muscle fibers, and can even be used in protein channels and cell membranes. To get all these different proteins, all we're doing is um, transcribing different genes. Somewhere in this two-part process, we're taking the genetic information in our DNA and we're transcribing that into a message, and then we're taking that message and translating that into a sequence of amino acids which are then ultimately determining the structure of that protein and then its function. So um, to do that, um, we're now going to look at translation, that process of going from that uh, messenger RNA to the sequence of amino acids. So I'm pretty proud of this. I made this um, today and, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. So first I'm just going to label some of the parts. So this yellow box is our um, ribosome, okay? And its job is to move along the messenger RNA from five prime to three prime, reading those nucleotides three bases at a time. And those three bases are called a codon. So um, three bases at a time, highlighted as a blue box here, are called a codon, okay? So this whole section here is our messenger RNA, okay? So we've got our ribosome in yellow, our messenger RNA as this blue sequence, um, separated into um, groups of three nucleotides, which is called a codon. And then on the side here, we have um, some transfer RNAs. Now one transfer RNA is basically, it's made up of RNA itself, and it contains an amino acid, which is this circle in purple. And then it's this you know, RNA string that's all folded up into a specific shape. But on the bottom is this exposed section of RNA, which has three bases exposed. And we call that um, the anticodon. So what's really cool in this machinery is that we have tRNA carrying amino acids with a specific anticodon on the bottom. Not only is the anticodon on the bottom specific, but the amino acid on top is specific. So the UAC always, the UAC anticodon tRNA, always carries a methionine amino acid. And likewise, a CCC anticodon will always carry a guanine um, uh, amino acid. So they're always specific. If you didn't know, um, we have 20 amino acids. Okay. But we read our bases three bases at a time. Okay. And because we do that, then we actually end up with four to the power of three. So um, in each of those positions, in each of those three positions, we can have um, one of four bases, arginine, uracil, guanine and cytosine, which means that we can have 64 different combinations of three base combinations, which means we also need 64 different transfer RNA molecules. But you're thinking, hang on a sec, so we've got 64 different transfer RNA molecules, but we've only got 20 different amino acids. And that's because some of the transfer RNAs carry the same amino acid, but they always carry that amino acid still. Some of the um, transfer RNA anticodons, uh, sorry, some of the codons, sorry, actually code for um, no amino acid at all. They code for like a stop, so end the translation process. Then the other thing that you'll notice about the um, ribosome here is I've got these three letters, EPA. Now, for simplicity, I'm going to call them things that they aren't technically called, except for the E. So the A, I'm going to call the arriving site. Okay, so you're arriving in the arriving site. The P, I'm going to call the processing site. And the E, I'm going to call the exit 
site. Okay. So these three sites are going to really help us understand the process of using this mRNA sequence to create an amino acid sequence. Okay, so let's have a look at the first step. So you can see that the ribosome has moved in um, to position and we now have the AUG lining up with the arriving site. So what's going to arrive? Well, the thing that's going to arrive is our first transfer RNA molecule, and you can see it move into position there. So the anticodon is complementary to the codon. So we've got the anticodon being complementary to the codon, and it carries that specific amino acid, which in this case is methionine. Now, methionine is always our starting um, amino acid for all of our proteins. So we're always start, so our uh, ribosome will always scan along our mRNA to find that first AUG, and that's the position where it starts. Okay? So after that happens, our ribosome just shifts across one codon. And you can see it move across there. So now we've got an exposed CUU. So we're looking for a transfer RNA to be complementary to that, to move into that now A arriving site. Now if you're really interested in, in what that A and the P stand for, um, you can Google them. Okay, so now we have our GAA anticodon move into the A site um, and complementary base pair with the CUU. And now we've got our two amino acids quite close to each other. Now, when they're so close to each other, we can actually form a covalent bond between those two amino acids. And it is called a peptide bond. Okay, and that'll pop up in a second and you'll be like, oh yeah. So that's our peptide bond. So what's going to happen next? We now get the ribosome to shift along one more. And you'll notice that our UAC transfer RNA has left through the exiting site and no longer carries its amino acid. The reason it doesn't carry it is because that methionine has been bonded um, to the L amino acid next to it. Okay? And so what's going to happen now? Well now the L or the GAA transfer RNA is in the processing site. Remember my terminology. So if you have to be specific, you could say the EPA sites, um, but if you have to be more specific than that, then you're going to have to look up the correct terms. But just for our understanding, um, we're going to call that the processing site. So the processing site is now going to form a covalent bond between the L and the Y amino acids. Okay. And the ribosome shifts across a codon, and that just keeps happening over and over again bonding adjacent amino acids together, and we start to form this poly, many, peptide, so lots of those peptide bonds, polypeptide. And this is our amino acid chain. So as we keep moving along, we keep building um, larger and larger polypeptides. Each new exposed um, codon is now in the um, arrival site, and the transfer RNA can bond into that section and then um, form a peptide bond to the adjacent amino acid. Until finally, we get to our stop codon and that tells our ribosome, um, our ribosome here uh, to break away and now we've got our amino acid chain or our polypeptide is finished. Now that polypeptide is already going to be folding and starting to take shape. It stays in that polypeptide and in its original shape, just as a single polypeptide, it's now going to form a protein. However, in some occasions, multiple polypeptides join together and form a larger, more complex protein. Um, but that's the, the basic um, translation process. Okay, so hopefully that made a lot of sense. So basically, the ribosome moves along one codon at a time, 
matching up an anticodon and then forming a peptide bond between the adjacent amino acids, forming that sequence. As I did in the last video, it's a really good idea to try and see, um, you know, it's easy to see it in a diagram. What does it look like more in real life? So this is still an animation, but it's an animation that's quite close to what would be happening um, inside an actual, um, an actual cell. So let's have a look at this. So now you can see this is the end of transcription. That is the mRNA molecule that has now broken away and is now snaking its way outside of the nucleus. Remember that mRNA was complementary to the template strand or the same as the coding strand, just with the thymines replaced with uracils. So here's our ribosome. You'll notice it's a two um, subunit um, ribosome. It joins onto the mRNA it waits and scans along to find that first um, AUG, and then it's gonna start matching up with those transfer RNAs. So you can see those transfer RNA molecules in green here, and they're each carrying a small amino acid, which was indicated in red, okay? And each one carries one of the 20 different amino acids. Okay, so you can see them flicking through here. One of the 20 different amino acids, threonine, arginine, serine, um, threonine, all of the different amino acids, glutamic acid, um, all the different amino acids. So now you can see the mRNA moving through the ribosome and now we get to start to see some of the magic inside. So you can see the sort of the three sites, the arrival site, the P site, which is where the um, amino acid chain is building from and it's just scanning three codons at a time. Matching up that anticodon, um, which is on the transfer RNA forming that peptide bond, and then going through. And what's amazing is this is happening at real time. Okay, so this video is showing it real time. Quite amazing. And then eventually, it will reach the stop codon position, and the polypeptide will then be finished. So, some of the things that you might be um, sort of tested upon is going from a mRNA sequence and then working out what sequence of amino acids you're gonna get. So you might see a diagram like this or the next one. But in this case, what we've got is a, um, again, a little five prime there if you notice to indicate that we're gonna move, we're gonna start here and then we're gonna move out. So if the codon was say GGA, we're gonna start with this G, go to this G and then find the A, and in this case, it's gonna represent glycine. Maybe the sequence was CAC. So we go CAC and it's HIS, which is histidine. Okay, so we can start to use the mRNA sequence. We can use a diagram like this to then find out what would the sequence of amino acids be. You also might get a diagram like this. So maybe you've got the mRNA and now you're working off this. How do we know this is an mRNA table? Well, if you look, there's uracil. So if it was DNA, they wouldn't have had the U, it would be thymine. So we know this is actually matching up our um, mRNA codons with the correct um, amino acid. So I've just put a question down the bottom here and I'd like you to have a go at it. And this is quite a cool one. So if we've got methionine, leucine, proline, glutamine, histidine, glycine, alanine, serine, threonine, and a stop, what might have the DNA template strand been to produce this sequence of amino acids. So have a go. Um, as always, um, put the comments down in the, uh, put your answers down in the comment section. Um, give the video a thumbs up and a like. Uh, if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want more videos. Um, but hopefully that was a really, uh, hopefully that really helped you understand translation. Um, if you're after uh, more videos, um, there's some from myself and my colleague. You can find us on Facebook at Anytime Education or our website, um, and as always, subscribe. If you didn't see some of my first videos, hopefully they're appearing up on the top here. You can click on those and see some of the previous videos, um, all the videos in the series. So coming up next, we'll be looking at, so now that we've made these proteins, how do they form their three-dimensional structures and their functions? Um, how do they fold in a specific way? So again, uh, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the video.